Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Golden Axe Beast Rider which was released on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in 2008. I'm not too sure whether this is actually a reimagining or um, a remake. I don't know really what the difference between a reimagining and a remake is but I'm not too sure whether it's a remake of the original Golden Axe. You play as Tyrus Flair, the Amazonian from the original Golden Axe game, and also within the game there you come across um, Julius Thunderhead, who's the dwarf from the original Golden Axe game, as well as Tarik the Axe Battler. Um, but they only appear in the game as NPCs, you can't play as them in the main campaign, which is a bit of a mystery really. I'm, I'm not too sure what Sega were thinking there. If they're doing a remake, a reimagining, a prequel or whatever, then if you're going to put these two other characters in the game then surely it makes sense to have them playable. I mean, it couldn't have been that difficult to have included them. Um, you know, a lot of other games do include the ability to play as different characters. So I can't understand why that was missing from this game. Anyway, um, the basic story of the game is that you are after Death Adder again, he's the main bad guy, and he's after something called the Power of the Dragon Titan, which he intends to use to rule over humanity and beasts alike. And this is explained with a cutscene that's coming up in a moment. What you're actually seeing here um, is right at the start of the game. The game um, sort of has a tutorial uh, to teach you the new moves and the conventions of the game. Now, what Sega have decided to do, unlike what they did with Sonic 4 where they perfected the 2D model um, of the original Sonic the Hedgehog games, what they've done here is they've gone for a full 3D world for Golden Axe. And as the game is actually called Golden Axe Beast Rider, they've included a lot more beasts for you to ride. Um, with the, and the beasts themselves have various different abilities. Now, unlike the original Golden Axe where you could go through the game and annoy the beasts, because most of the time they just were annoying, they were, they were unwieldy, they usually got you into more problematical situations than they were as help. Um, in this game, they are a necessity. Um, as you saw there, the the beasts are required on some occasions to access new areas, so you can't really ignore them. They are a necessity, and at certain points in the game, um, you really do have to use them. Now, this is the cutscene which explains what's going on um, that I was mentioning to you earlier. Basically, Tyrus Flair. Um, as anyone knows who's played the original Golden Axe is an Amazonian who was capable of using fire magic. Now this is where the confusion for me comes from as to whether this is a prequel to Golden Axe or a remake because the inference here is her being given the powers from this dragon to use a fire magic. Now this is the dragon titan that Death Adder is after, so as well, you'll see in a few seconds during the cutscene, um, his army comes along and uh, attacks the dragon. There we go. And goes about slaying all the priests, well, priestesses and what have you. Very similar in some respects to uh, to the Bridget Nielsen Arnold Schwarzenegger film Red Sonja. Um, but I'd have to say the acting in this is far better than in Red Sonja. <laughs> the game itself is split into three main game modes. Um, that is campaign, which is the main story. The challenge mode, which is the... Basically it's the campaign modes, levels that you unlock as you play through the game. And you can play through these levels um, using the equipment that you unlock throughout the game. And the final one is the Trials mode, which is the equivalent to the Dual mode that was found on the original Golden Axe game when it was released 
on the home formats. I had it on the Sega Mega Drive, um, which for me personally was the best um, conversion of the game. Although uh, the only other two formats I did play it on at home were the Commodore 64 version, um, which wasn't that great, and the Sega Master System version which was actually pretty good, although you could only play as Axe Battler in the Master System version. The real curious thing about this game is uh, it did receive quite a number of bad reviews when it was released and some of them were exceptionally harsh, which I don't agree with. It is a reasonably good game, but I think the main problem with it is at times I don't think it really knows what it wants to be. It seems to get caught between a game that really is more focused on just using beasts all the time to get through various parts of the game, or a hack and slash. And the reason I say this is because the actual combat model itself um, isn't particularly robust. The, the game is very, very tough. Um, which you usually come to expect from Sega games anyway, they tend to be rather unforgiving. But there just seems to be elements to the combat system that just don't work properly. And it's particularly highlighted when you go away and you play um, a game like Bayonetta, which is another Sega game. And the combat mechanic in Bayonetta is nigh on perfect. It's so well done every element of the combat has been well thought out and the challenge in the game, I mean Bayonetta is also a tough game but you know you can get through areas of the game by using different combat tactics, there is a greater emphasis on that. The main problem with Golden Axe is there just doesn't seem to be the same level of refinement and that's a real sad thing because you can't help but feel when you play this just a, a little bit more focus on the combat mechanic. You could have ended up with a really top-notch game. I mean, graphically, it's nothing extremely special, but it's by no means bad. And um, you know, I do like hack and slash games, and it, it does do a good enough job, I suppose. But there's always that feeling of a missed opportunity when you play the game. It's, it's it's kind of hard to explain, but to give you an example, you can block or evade enemy attacks, but in order to block, it requires you to, to have the timing of the block and the evade almost down to a fine art. It, it becomes quite difficult. And as you can see here, once you get hit, especially if you've got two bad guys either side of you, um, it's almost like they're playing tennis with you, you just get hit from one bad guy to another, so you end up having to almost revert back to just bashing the buttons and, and trying to attack them before they attack you. Um, maybe it's just me playing the game wrong, it, it could be that I'm just completely rubbish at it, but it does remove a, an element of tactics from it. And again, playing a, a tough game like Bayonetta you know, I don't want to keep going back to it, but, you know, in that, yes, I do die quite a lot, but I can learn the tactics I need to defeat bad guys in a certain area. It, you know, it's like here, the, the, the lightning bolts that hit you here just temporarily stun you, and, you know, it, it, make it makes it quite difficult to do it, so you, you lose a quite a considerable amount of energy, um, because of the fact that, you know, and they're also the, like, homing lightning bolts as well. It just makes it frustrating at times when it needn't be. You know, make the combat difficult, but, you know, make it a bit more fair as well. Make it... And again, you know, I'm just saying it might be me that's not playing it properly, but it just make it a little bit more fair. Um, again, you know, you do stand a better chance riding on the, the back of the beast here, like this one here is a, um, the ability to like teleport and go invisible and is also you know very good ground attack and, and what have you. The beasts themselves have their own power bar which is depleted um, as they get hit 
Now, rather annoyingly, as you see there, just as in the original Gold Mirage, he can be knocked off the back of the beast, and the bad guys can then get on the back, but it's like, as you see there, he's just taking multiple hits, and it's very difficult to do anything about it. And so, you end up at times having to use, like I had to use there, some magic. You have to use overpowering attacks just to get out of situations. And that to me just reeks of, of a gameplay that's not been well thought out. You shouldn't have to do that. You know, you should be able to use your own ability to be able to get out of a situation. You shouldn't have to resort to overkill in order to do it. And it's, again, just... Oh, it just brings that bit of frustration to proceedings. But, again, the frustration is, is born out of the fact that I feel the developers were really close to making a very, very good game. But for some reason, I don't know whether they had to rush the release of it, or whether they just, you know, were happy with it in themselves. Case. I just felt that we missed a real opportunity here to, to reboot a franchise in 3D that could have been really excellent. I mean, just for the record, I don't have a problem I mean, to use the beast to get through parts of the game. I just wish that, you know, there was a better balance between the hack and slash and, and using the actual beast themselves. Like I say, it is a very, very tough game. Um, can pick up items, Adina you know, weapons and, and what have you, you can boost your magic and, and so on and so forth to get out of situations. Um, but all the while it is it can be just overbearingly difficult at times and it can put you off, it, it can put the average gamer off. But I don't think that is enough to mark a game down. If we're gonna start marking games down because they're difficult then what does that really say about, you know, the average game reviewer? What does that say if just because a game's tough and is a very tough challenge, it deserves to be marked down like it has been? Then I don't agree with that, because it's hypocrisy. Games like, for example, Demon's Souls is celebrated because it's difficult. Now, you know, same with Ninja Gaiden, or Ninja Gaiden, however you pronounce it. If you're going to mark this game down, just mark it down purely on the more befuddled combat than anything else. But if you're a fan of Hack and Slash and you're a fan of the Golden Axe series, it does deliver. Thanks for watching the video.